Today I'm going to show you how to make urethane engine mounts for less than $50. these engine mounts you're going to need some liquid urethane, some sort of cups to use as a mold for the urethane, four large fender washers, these are two inches in diameter with a half inch hole, two medium sized washers and four regular sized washers, you'll need eight nuts, you'll need at least two five inch studs, I could not get these in a five inch length so I got one 12 inch length and I'm going to cut it down. The way this is going to work is I took this cup measured up from the bottom until it was about two inches in diameter drew a line i then measured three inches up because they need to be three inches tall made another mark which left us with this cup so here's the two inch diameter and here's the top so we have our three inches of depth using a two inch hole saw i made a small indention in this board and this is where our urethane is going to be poured you'll take the stud place it in here Got a nice tight fit on the bottom. I'll seal the bottom up and around this ring here before I pour the urethane in. I'll make sure I have the same amount sticking at the bottom and the top. And what this will do is this washer is going to trap this stud right in the middle of the urethane, all of the little ribbing of the threads. And that washer is gonna hold the stud in place then it'll be bolted down at the top and the bottom, and that's gonna be our engine mount. It's really quite simple, and it can all be done for less than $50. Also, if you don't have a two inch hole saw, you can still do it the same way. You'll just need to cut it at this height, and then you'll have to seal it around the outside. So it won't be quite as easy as if you have the hole saw, but it can still be done. So this is what you get with your urethane kit. It's enough to make two engine mounts from scratch. It's designed so you can pour it into gaps and stock engine mounts, but the 350Z mounts are not like that. It's more for a front wheel drive application than it is for a rear wheel drive application. But it'll be enough to make the two mounts from stock. Comes with some instructions, your liquid urethane and the activator to make it dry. This one is a 94A, that's the firmest urethane that they sell. You could also get it in an 80 high performance, an 80A, and a 60A. The softer it is, the better it's going to be on the street. The harder it is, the better performing it's going to be. I hope this makes a little bit more sense now. I've got the two cups which are going to hold the shape of the polyurethane to give a nice cylindrical engine mount. You've got the stud going through it and then you've got this washer held in place by two nuts and that's what's going to make sure that the urethane stays in place through all the vibration and everything. Between that and all the ribbing of the stud, it's not going anywhere. I did have a small miscalculation in that the mounts need to be four inches tall, not three inches tall, so I'm probably not going to have enough urethane. We'll see, it's going to be really close, but I'm just going to do the best as I can. If I have to add some more later, that's fine. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But for now, the plan is get every last bit of the activator and every last bit of the urethane into that cup. Fill it up as high as I possibly can to get every last bit out and then we're going to pour it into our molds. Pouring is complete. I've had to use one of the old engine mounts and one of the bottles for the activator to balance these out to make sure they stay perfectly level. I don't want a weird wonky engine mount. But the pour went really well. I didn't get many bubbles. If any bubbles that are there are bubbling out now, so it should be pretty solid. Really the only issue is I was only able to get them to be three and five eighths of an inch tall instead of four inches tall. Not that big of a deal. It's only gonna drop the engine down three eighths of an inch, which if anything, 
anything that's beneficial because it's going to lower the center of the gravity of the front of the car. And if you're going to use the same exact kit that I'm going to put in the bottom, which was not intended for this, it's not their fault. It's my fault because I did my math wrong. It'll work if you can get a perfect two inch cylinder that's four inches tall. But because this cup is two inches here in the middle, but it comes out to two and a quarter up here, this expansion up here at the top, because it's wider, you've got extra volume up here that could be used for height instead of width. And that's what's taking up the extra material. So if you can find a cylinder that is two inches in diameter and four inches tall, you'll have enough material. If you use the same cups I did, you're just not gonna have enough material. It'll come up a little short. But like I said, it's really gonna be a benefit for us. Dropping the engine down a little bit will give the engine more room under the strut bar. It'll drop the engine down, so I'm dropping a lot of weight down, but it's not such a drop that it's gonna cause some sort of problem with oil pan interference or putting a strain on the drivetrain in any way. So I'm gonna let these dry for 24 hours, which for you should be right about now. So the mounts are dry enough that they are solid. They're not dry enough to put on the car, but they are dry enough. I can go ahead and remove this cup, remove them from the board. It'll be a little bit easier to clean them up now. If you have one, I would highly recommend having a thread chasing tool for whichever thread pitch you choose to use for this. You can use a standard pitch. It can be M10, it could be 7 16 it doesn't matter. You're just putting two bolts on the other end. As long as they can fit through the hole in the car, it doesn't matter. But if you can have a tool to clean the threads up, that'll make it a lot easier to install in the car and get any urethane off here that might have gotten on during the process. And we have our finished engine mounts. It was that easy. It was really just make the mold was the hard part. And after that, all you had to do was pour it in, let it sit, let it dry, peel it out, clean it up a little bit. I again use the thread chasing tool just to make sure all these threads are clean. I'm not gonna have any issues threading it into the car. One of the side benefits of this is these two engine mounts together weigh two and a half pounds. The stock engine mounts, these big heavy things, plus the engine damper I had on the car, weigh 10 pounds. So I saved seven and a half pounds off the front of the car. I'm lowering the front of the engine a little bit. I'm also gonna have a lot more stable engine. So really this is a huge benefit for only $50 and a couple hours of time. The hardest part really was just getting the old mounts out and getting these back in, making these was a piece of cake. If I was gonna do this again, like I said, I would do a two inch cylinder instead of the tapered cups. I'd spend a little bit more time trying to find a perfect two inch cylinder and this would work perfectly. I would also try to make these fender washers part of the piece. So using this to seal the bottom of that two inch container so that this is permanently attached. I don't really mind it. It's not gonna make it that much more difficult to install in the car, but it is an added step. So if you could find a way to mold those in, that would be great. So if I was gonna do it again, I'd do it slightly differently. But these are gonna work great. I can't wait to install them on the car. Just in case anyone is wondering how these mount up to the car, these aluminum brackets bolt to the side of the engine. You have one nut up here and then a nut down here that bolts to the subframe. I've got the two fender washers here just to make sure the load is evenly supported across the bottom of the mount. I've got the stock mount right here. It's just a bigger, heavier mount. It's there to absorb engine vibration and make the car a little bit more comfortable. I am going to reuse the factory heat shield, which will go right here. And what that's going to do is sit right here and protect this from any heat from the headers. So as I mentioned, because the mounts were a little bit shorter, it's going to drop the engine about an inch. And one added benefit that I didn't even think of is I can now run my strut brace back in the stock location perfectly flush with the strut tower, whereas before I had it lifted up about a half inch on spacers. So I still have plenty of room in between the carbon intake and the strut tower thanks to these new engine mounts. So it dropped a 350 pound engine an inch, 10 pounds of strut bar down another inch. You also got rid of the spacers on all these corners and I can go back to the shorter factory bolts. So really it ended up saving me probably 10 pounds plus it relocated 350 pounds. And of course the mounts are stiffer. So really it was a huge win for less than 50 bucks. These really had a lot of extra benefits on top of what a normal engine mount is gonna do. Thanks for watching. I'll do an update on these just to let you know how they're doing. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.